there's soil right there. So there's. I'm gonna put this tape measure in there. There's nine inches of soil or of sand right there. Nine inches of sand right there over an area of several hundred square feet. Sand deposition is normal in how a stream changes and meanders, but the volume of sand that comes in due to the volume of water that we're having um, is due to the impervious surfaces upstream. The Hinkson Creek is listed on the EPA's threatened waterways list, the 303D list. It's listed for non-point source pollution, and that's exactly what this sand is. It's non-point source pollution. It doesn't come from just one place. It isn't a sewage lagoon overflowing. It's not a chemical spill on the highway. It's the accumulated damage to the stream, the entire stream valley, by mankind's influence on the waterway. Um, construction, road work, uh, impervious surfaces that cause higher, faster flows, uh, not natural flows. Historically, our soils were moderately moist all year long. Now we have these peaks and valleys where it gets wet a lot in the spring. It, we've made the water run off real quick, and then we get cracks and dried yards because we don't have any percolation of the subsurface moisture back through our soils. This is my yard about 40 yards down from the big sand pile in my neighbor's yard. And you can see here, the sand's not quite as deep. Um, it's only about three inches deep of sand over the top of the soil. It was enough blanketed throughout the back of my yard that it killed all the grass, killed everything green uh, back here in this part of the yard. The trees were able to survive and some of the bushes were able to survive, but even some of them were stressed um, from the flood and were killed. The, the deposition of sand here is less than it was upstream because the water was flowing just a little bit faster here. This, the water got back into the stream bed about 100 yards downstream, so the sandbar ends when the water goes back into the stream bank. It's a symptom of a disease that we have with Hinkson Creek that we're putting too much sediment in it. We're disturbing soils, the clay soils that are near here. The sand is what drops out. Uh, the red fine soil that's in a clay washes downstream and washes out to the Gulf of Mexico. It's suspended in the water. Even in slow moving water, the uh, red fines will stay suspended in the water. So here, the bigger fines, the sands and the small gravel drop out because the stream slows down when it's outside of the, uh, proper, the channel proper. The sediment that drops out here is all, the same sediment that's dropping out in the stream. And that sediment fills the interstitial spaces between the rocks. And those little spaces between the rocks is where all the invertebrates live. All the little creepy crawlies, the isopods and the anthropods that everything feeds on, the food web, they all grow in those interstitial spaces that are being filled in by this sand. As you start to collapse the food base for the larger organisms, the entire animal base of the stream changes. You don't have minnows, you don't have fish, you don't have turtles because you've taken away the basic building blocks of the food web. Everywhere that it slows down, it's, it's depositing sand at about nine inches and depending on the severity of the flood, how long it lasts, how quickly it rises and quickly it falls, will, will be a uniform measure of sand because the sand can only be supported in flows for a certain length of time for a certain volume of water. So nine inches is this flood event. That's what measures this flood event as a nine inch sand deposit.